Hi, this is your host, Swamil Bhartia, and welcome to a special edition of TFR Let's Talk here at KubeCon EU in Amsterdam. And today we have with us once again, Mike Kelly, CEO of Observe IQ. Mike, it's great to have you on the show in person. Yeah, it's great to be back and great to meet you in person. Uh, it's exciting to see folks in person, how tall, how short you actually are, <laughs> because Zoom window makes everybody the same height. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's talk a bit about, since we are here at KubeCon EU, and if I'm not wrong, you said it was your first uh, KubeCon in Europe. Yeah. So I want to hear from you what kind of you know experience you or what kind of audience, what kind of interest you have seen here. Yeah, I mean it's it's been a great conference so far and just getting started. But um, uh, you know for us, observability day is always a great time to meet folks that are uh, working on the same projects that we're on, that are focused on observability, open source observability, um, and the open telemetry project as well. So getting to meet some of the people that we haven't seen before in in, in person, right? But work with almost every day or at least every week. Um, so I, I love to see the momentum uh, continue from last KubeCon and some of these core projects and observability like open telemetry. There's uh, just building more and more interest and um, I think momentum behind the project, which has been exciting for us. Um, and also interest in you know, observability pipelines and, and unified telemetry um, concepts that you know really a year, two years ago uh, didn't have much understanding and still are, are still fairly new. Um, but but seeing those kind of gaining uh, more mind share is great. Yeah, so true. Any announcement that you folks made here? Yeah, actually, uh, so at this KubeCon, we announced the the cloud version of BindPlane OP. So um, we started out, uh, we launched an open source version late last year, uh, host self-hosted, and then our enterprise version, and now uh, the cloud one, uh, quick on the heels. So excited to have that out there as a, a quick way for people to get started with BindPlane. So what was the driver behind you know, BindPlane for cloud? It's interesting because in earlier versions of, of BindPlane, we always went, we always started with a, a cloud version, but we heard from customers, you know, they really, especially larger customers, wanted something that they could self-host, and so that's where we started. Uh, but it always intended to, to, to follow with the cloud version as well. Um, and it's just an easier experience. It's always, you know, fast to get started. And BindPlane, OP is, is easy to use to begin with, but uh, but you add a cloud version and it lets people get started in, in minutes, right? Which is um, exciting and, and allows more people to, to use this and try it out. Any difference between the functionality of the two or it's the same, just it runs on the cloud versus self-hosted? The functionality is the same uh, and we've been really uh, uh, intentional about keeping those on the same versions. So it's the same as buying plain enterprise, except we're, we're hosting for you, you don't have to worry about that. Can you talk a bit about, uh, you know, since we are here in Europe, when it comes to observability, it could mean different things depending on different spaces. You know, we yeah. can also talk about observability also help the security, it can also help the compliance. And when you're in the European Union, they are very strict when it comes to data, privacy, right. cloud. So so talk a bit about what, what, what kind of difference you have seen when we talk about observability here versus observability back in the States. Yeah, yeah, it's, I think, you know, understandably, there's more com of a compliance focus, right? We need to know where the data is, make sure it's it's staying within bounds, within regulations, um, and that's something that that we have a focus on, regardless. So, so we tend to work with with organizations that have high compliance needs because that's what that's one of the things that buying plan OP is really good at is making sure that we're we're shipping data um, just where you need it to go, and making it easier to control the the flow of your telemetry data, logs, metrics, traces, and other data. Um, and, and so we have worked with a number of European co companies that are looking to just keep data within a certain bounds and, and within regulations, and that's what they're using BindPlane for. So certainly more of a focus on that, uh, on compliance, um, than you might see in the States, although, of course, we, we, we see that in everywhere. Um, but yeah, I would say that's, that's a notable difference for sure. When we look at the cloud, public cloud, yeah. uh, cloud native in general in European market versus the US market, European, you know, they, it's a lot of, you know, like DTK, they have their own cloud, they use OpenStack and everything else, yeah. or in other parts of the world as well. Uh, so do you see the market is also different? Because when they look at these projects, uh, the way they approach is a bit different mm -hmm. than we approach, because in US it's like hyper scalers are everywhere. Here yeah. a lot of companies are building their own clouds as well. Yeah, I mean, that's been interesting to see, but, but we're even seeing a shift Back from cloud now, which which no one would have thought of a, a few years ago, um, and so I think it's the the gap seems to be closing in a lot of ways. But um, I've seen that there's more interest and more um, I, I think a faster adoption of some of these projects in uh, the EU than there has been maybe years in the past, which is interesting. And a lot of you know we we come here and 
uh, a lot of the core contributors to these projects are based in the the, the EU. You know, the, they're the core developers and the development teams, and so you can see that there's there's traction based on that. Um, you know, in terms of clouds, uh, cloud specific, that just tends to to run the gamut at this point. It's um, and it's almost a requirement that you need to be able to support everything, anything and everything. And that's where you know Kubernetes tends to to level the playing field, where you can. It doesn't matter what cloud you're using. If if folks are on it, and a lot of people in this conference obviously are, um, it can be easy. Can you also talk about uh, the the whole evolution? Because you're talking about meeting the telemetry community as well. You know, yeah. the there are multiple project open senses, and you know, from Google and Flatus, yeah. they merged to create you know open telemetry as well. So right. talk a bit about the evolution that you've seen of the telemetry layer itself. Yeah, no, it's been. I think it's been really exciting for uh, the space in the last few years. One of the most exciting things is with the OpenTelemetry project and others, uh, really uh, uh, vendors coming together. So folks that in the past maybe had competing standards um, really deciding that, yeah, we want to go forward with a couple of core standards, uh, including OpenTelemetry, um, but others as well. Uh, and so seeing that evolution and the shift in platforms to support it, um, but also a need for not just a, a way to collect the data, but also to, to control the flow of data. And we're seeing that shift really rapidly. So vendors adding a observability pipeline or control layer, um, you know, our own version of Bind Plane OP, but others in, in the market as well, just recognizing that there's a need for a unified telemetry layer. And that was something that didn't really exist before, but with the, the amount of data now, the number of uh, platforms that people are using, whether it's for security or compliance or uh, application monitoring, uh, it, that there's an emerging need for something to control all that data and to control the flow of it. You folks are relatively new. I mean, actually, mm -hmm. everything is relatively new in the cloud native right, Kubernetes yeah. space. You know, now when we look at Kubernetes, we're like, oh my God, it's that old, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So talk a bit about the company. What is going to be your focus? Uh, and you know, as you said, this is the first you know European KubeCon you're attending. When you look at this audience, yeah. I just want to understand, you know, what kind of plans do you have for the company? It's um, uh, amazing how, th how quickly things move, but we've only been around for a couple of years. Um, uh, this is our first KubeCon Europe, um, but really where we're, we're focused on is developing this unified telemetry layer. So what that means is, is uh, focusing on the agents, the integrations, and the control of those, the control plane for those. And that has a lot of benefits, right? It's something that people are recognizing. If you can standardize how you're collecting all of your telemetry data, um, and if you standardize the way that you're controlling it, then you no longer have to instrument uh, applications and code five different ways for five different platforms. You just do it one time, and then that feeds all of your analytics. And this is a newer concept, and I think it, it, it parallels what folks have seen in the development community. So if you think about the way developers started to iterate and release quickly, the CI CD revolution that completely changed how development got done, that's coming to observability, right? And if you have some control over the data, you can iterate faster. You can control where your, your data flows, and it doesn't require a, a you know, five-month effort, six-month effort to redeploy agents to support a new platform. Earlier, we were talking about the whole evolution of the telemetry layer. Can you talk also about, you know, unified telemetry layer and also what were you folks are doing here? Because, you know, as the technologies are evolving, there are a lot of, you know, pain points are still yeah. there. So and there are still things to, to further improve. So talk about that. It's a good question. When we, we started, we were really focused on, on how to make management easy and make configuration management easy. Um, but there's been more and more focus, especially over the last six months, on how do you reduce the data? And so we've added a lot of functionality like log deduplication and metric uh, statistics. And what all of these do uh, is they let you reduce the data that's flowing uh, without impacting your visibility. So you still have the same results. You're still able to, to, to diagnose, have the same security alerts, have the same application performance indications but with far, far less data. And that means a lot less cost. So that's been a big focus um, in the product in the last uh, several months. Since you brought up the point of cost, we are here, and we, cost cutting is becoming a yeah. big topic, mm -hmm. uh, cost efficiency. Talk a bit about not just telemetry, but how you folks are helping organizations, You know, because sometimes this also adds the cost, but right. sometimes moving to a specific product helps you with you know, cost cutting. So yeah. talk about the role that you folks are playing in helping companies uh, control cost. Yeah, our big focus is on reducing observability costs. And, and that is through um, uh, reduction of data. And once you have a pipeline, once you control the flow of data from the source to the destination, 
have a lot of tools in our tool belt, toolbox to, to reduce the data that's flowing through it. And so with Bind Plane OP, one of the biggest uh, reasons people would adopt this is they're looking to reduce, say, their log data that they're sending to a security solution um, or reroute data so that they have uh, uh, log data, say, in a compliance uh, low cost storage for compliance purposes but then all their critical information is going to their security analytics platform. And these are things that people are starting to do as they're getting more co cost conscious and they realize that this is something that the amount of data is scaling too quickly to, to manage. We need to find ways to reduce it, but keep, keep the value that we're getting from the, the security and application analytics. Mike, thank you once again for taking time out today and talk to me. And it's really great to see you in person. And I would, you know, as usual, love to talk to you again soon. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was great to see you again and, and have a great rest of your show.